All right. Ephesians 6, everybody. Ephesians 6, starting in verse 10. Okay. When you're there, say, I'm there. Four of you. Good. Praise Jesus. We can start. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6, chapter 10. It starts out with, finally, my brethren. He says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand the wiles of the enemy. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the high places. He said, therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, he said to stand. Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, and for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Hallelujah. Put on the whole armor of God. So we're going to go down here and talk about the armor of God in each piece that we got to put on. And Paul was writing this. Uh, while he was in prison, and he was talking about the military Roman army at the time, which they all recognized and understood, okay? In verse 10, the word power is from the Greek word kratos, meaning ruling power, okay? And the word might is from the Greek word uh, is iskus, and that means endued power. That means we're to be stabilized, having the inner power which keeps us always upright, we're supposed to be stable and strong. This ruling power was given to us and endowed in us the moment, everybody say the moment, Amen. we received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Okay? We received all of that when we got born again. Okay? And Paul is trying to tell us. He wants us to be stabilized in it. Okay? Be stabilized. He said to put on the whole armor of God. He said to stand and fight, okay? Uh, over here in verse, um, he said to put on the whole armor of God. You may be able to stand against the wiles or the strategies of the enemy. Do you know the devil, he got kicked out of heaven, and he's here and because of his pride, and he's got some strategies, okay? And he said, verse 12, because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. That's where the battle is fought. We're not fighting against our husbands or our wives, we're not fighting against our neighbors or anything else. It is the spirit behind that. If we will grasp a hold of that, then we will understand that, ha ha, no matter who cuts me off in line, no matter how young or how old they are, when they cut me off as I'm driving down Highway 62, and they come over in the line, and I want to do, ah! <clears throat> Father, I praise you and I bless them, even though they willfully and spitefully tried to use me. As I adjust my attitude during that whole time, I realize that the enemy is trying to use something to steal my joy. Have anybody else besides me? Three? Oh, golly, I could need to go next door. I'm in the wrong house. Y'all are way, way. Has anybody had an opportunity to walk in love with these this week besides me? Jenny? Oh, 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 okay. Some honest folks here. Okay, good, 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 good. All right, so you're not, even though we are perfected in our spirits, it's this flesh, this outer self, our mind, our will, and emotions, our thoughts, and our feelings that sometimes try to trip us up. Is that correct? Okay, just checking. Just check and make sure we're in the right place. Okay, all right. So he said, stand and fight, be ready, okay? 
He said, therefore, take up the whole armor of God. That's all of it. He said, take it up. That means it's laid here before us. That means we don't have to go get it. It's already given. He said, so take it up, okay? Are you getting that? It's already been given to us. We already got it. He said, take it up. He said, that we may be able to withstand an evil day. And he said, having done all to stand. What's he say? Stand there for, okay? Having girded your waist with truth. And you'll see that the Romans, when they, when they got ready for war, they're putting on their armor. The belt holds the closing together. The belt holds the weapons. It helps the soldier be ready to do the tough work. He's got all of his things ready to go. He said, to, he goes, having girded your waist with truth. And then he said, having put on the what? The breastplate of righteousness, okay? The breastplate protects, it protects the heart that is here and all the vital organs, okay? And um, we can, it can, it, every man in there had one of those breastplates on them, okay? It was custom made to fit each person. Uh, mine might have been a little bit bigger than some of y'all's, but, you know, it protected the soldier from arrows, knives, spears, and sword. It protected that heart. It girded his heart, okay? That righteousness. We are God's righteous seed because of what Jesus did. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus already. So he said, make sure we got that breastplate on, that understanding on in that breastplate, okay? And he said, the shoes of the gospel of peace. And he goes, having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The shoes that protected the soldier's feet. The shoes were made from leather, and there were nails on the bottom, and he said it was real hard to walk backward in them with those nails on that. I read a whole bunch of stuff. I watched some other shows, but, you know, those guys, I don't know if... That'd be a tough job. You know, I see our policemen with all the stuff they have to put on, but these guys, you know, shoes would have nails in the bottom? I don't know about that. But that's what they had to do. They were, they, were, uh, they were the preparation of the gospel of peace. Our job is to carry that good news wherever we go as couriers and carriers of his presence. So we're supposed to go and share the gospel. Well, pastor, I'm not going to go down and preach that. You don't have to preach. Just be. Come on. Just be. You know, just be that light. Instead of standing on your horn, ah, you say, face Jesus, come right ahead. Oh, you didn't even see me. No, I didn't think so. You know, we can be that type of light in the world, okay? It's okay to be that kind of light in the world. All right, the next one says, the shield of faith. Everybody say shield of faith. Shield of faith. All right, he said that, he said above all, in verse 16, he says, above all, take the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Now that little word in there, darts, you may think of the little darts that we throw that might have been lit on the thing. Back in the Romans day, they didn't just do little bitty fiery darts. If you've ever watched any of those shows, they are catapulting these great big giant balls that are trenched in tar and lit on fire and they're coming at you. Or they got these arrows that are lit you know, coming at you. And that shield was able to protect the whole body when he was, it was lightweight and it was movable so you could protect yourself on each and every side. So he said to take the shield of faith. You know, that word of faith that we've learned on the inside of us, he's taken, it, it's like a shield and you use it and you boom, 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 that you're able to quench. And all the time we're advancing. We're not, you know, we're standing strong, but at the same time, boom. You know how those guys move, and they move as one, and they move as one voice in that, okay? All right, and he said, um, he said then you got to take up the helmet of salvation, okay? The helmet protected the head. It was made from thick leather inside and metal on the outside. It protect, protected the back of the neck, and it protected the face so the soldier could still keep his eyes on the prize, keep his eyes on the goal, okay? So he was protected. He said to keep that helmet, helmet, helmet of salvation on. Okay, <clears throat> I, need, I need a volunteer here. Come here, Gary. Grab this, please. And he said, and the sword of the spirit, hold that up, please. Okay. He said, which is the word of truth. Now, 
My question, I said, it's always been cool to me. I love swords and everything about them. I said, but the sword, you know, um, oh, I forgot to do the slide, sorry. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, okay? All right? Now, that was what a lot of, I was talking to Don Baker beforehand, and he said that was what is a lot of men used to use. You know, they try to take that sword out and do this thing, and everybody gets that picture. You got this big, giant sword that you're trying to sling, but God was sharper than the Romans had this smaller sword. Here, you take it. I'm not fighting you. No, no. I'm not fighting you. You're supposed to hold those. Okay. This one is easier to wield, and it's easier to get in to do close fighting with, and you can do, do it. And you know it's sharpened. Most of these I like because they're, they're sharpened at the edge, but then they're sharpened on both sides. A lot of the other swords were like some of the big broad swords. They were just one. You tried to, there were some four or five foot long to take two men, but they could cut off four or five heads at once, but they might be dead by the time they got back around because somebody else might have come back. The short one here, I mean, they could go, boom, they could do, could do their thing, keep moving to, to, to do all that they think. So it's, it's pointed to go in and cut, but it's sharp on both sides, so it cuts in and it cuts back out. So it's constantly moving when we send the word into there. Okay, thank you. All right, so that is the sword of the Spirit, which the Bible says is the what? Word of truth. It is the word of God, okay? That word, <laughs> that word, that word, it's this here, this word. So you remember I taught last week, started teaching, I'll finish up the next part of it next week, um, but we talked about, you know, we've already got it. We have everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness already, you know, and we have to have that paradigm shift of how we looking at something. When we're standing here and we're believing God for something, when it's already been given to us, we just say, well, God, I'm waiting. Come on, please. Oh, please send it. Oh, please send it. Please send me the Holy Spirit. God, give me some love. Give me some love. Oh, I need some love. He said, I've already given it to you. If you go into Galatians, see, she says, man, all are the fruit of the Spirit. We've already got them in, in us. Sometimes they get dormant because we do have an enemy that's shooting those fiery darts and our shield may be over here. We might have taken the helmet off. We might have taken something else off and, and our clothes and all the armor is strewn everywhere. And he never once in here does he say to take it off. He says take it up. Never once have I read anywhere after that where he says, oh, take it off. You've already won that battle. I'll go ahead and take it off. Relax a little bit. No! He says to stay clothed in it. He said, keep taking that sword of the Spirit. He said, let the, let the enemy know, say, hey, I want to tell you something. You're trying to steal my stuff? Who do you think you are? Because this says, huh, he was wounded for my transgressions. He was bruised for my iniquities. Ooh, ooh. He said, by his stripes, I am healed. You trying to steal hell from me? Um, but pastor, I just don't, we're already the whole. And if we're already healed, why are we trying to get healed? We want the manifestation to come. Okay, so we got to come from that point. No, I'm already the healed. Somebody's trying to steal my stuff. If they come into your house, are you just going to sit there? Yeah, go ahead and take my wife. Heck no, he ain't. He's going to pull out his Ruger or his Smith & Wesson. Excuse me, my sword yeah, this is quicker. And he's going to let the enemy know that, no, this is my stuff, my house. Same thing. This is my money. This is my stuff. You ain't got no right to it, no way. They say, well, what about that sin you committed last week? I put it under the blood. What do you think about that, you moron? You can talk to the devil like that. It's okay. You can tell him. You can just tell him, say, uh-uh, no way. Don't, don't let him steal. They said, no, take him by the sword of the spirit, okay? That's what, that's what we got to do. That's what we got to look at it. We got to have that stance. It's a whole different animal. Man, it just brings new light. It makes you, you know, yeah. He said, and how do we come into that manifestation? And I talked to you about by acknowledging 
every good thing that is already in us in Christ Jesus. That's where the confession thing comes in. We're acknowledging, well, I'm trying to get this. No, you're not. You're acknowledging what is already there. No, I'm confessing to get that. No, you're not. You're acknowledging what you already have. And in acknowledging that, your mind's going to change. You're going to have a shift. Your faith is going to become active. Boom, because you can move and be mobile with it. And all of a sudden, things are happening. Things are attracting to you. That bill's paid. All of a sudden, whoa! I've had an opportunity with, with lymphedema in my legs. I got the veins done. And um, I've had cellulitis. I've battled that on and off, you know, times in the hospital, and I've taken a different stance with it, okay? Now, I've been advised to get oils. Well, I'd use them eh, once every three or four months. Eh, I'll throw some on there. I've taken a different stance. I started getting aggressive with it, and I started applying the stuff to it, and I started saying, nah, uh you have got to clear up. You ain't got no right to stay there. And you know what's happening? They're itching like crazy. They have for three weeks. They won't stop itching. I'm itching and itching and itching. And they got bright beet red like, the, like that stuff was going to try to spread. And I said, <sighs> so we marked it with a pen. And it says, we get a note to the doctor. I said, no, man, they're getting healed. I feel it. You know, I know something's moving in them because they're not dead. My toes are even alive. They're coming alive again. The blackness is disappearing. Now, you know, this, something's going on in in below my knees and those legs, that junk is moving. Why? I took a different stance and got aggressive. It's okay to be aggressive. It wasn't passive anymore. We have been passive and the devil likes us to be passive. He likes us just to stay back and, well, whatever will be, will be. Must be God trying to teach me a lesson. No! (laughs) That's right, amen. Amen. Come on, Brantley, tell him. Said no, pastor said no. That's what we tell the devil, no. Trying to steal my marriage. Trying to steal my joy. Trying to steal my peace. Trying to steal it all. Trying to steal my my dream. God, some of you had a dream in your heart from the time you were little. It has been dormant because it did not come to pass and you may be 60 years old. Well, I guess it ain't come to pass. Resurrect it. Make it come alive. Say, wait a minute. You come alive. Man, he's all about that. He's talking about the, he said, what did you say to the dead man's bones? He said, what? Live. They come alive. I'm telling you, if we'll take the shift, we'll change this territory in, in a short amount of time. If we'll, you know, he, want us to, he wants us to gain knowledge we get in there with the word, but knowledge, if left like it is, it'll just puff up and we think, well, I know more about that situation. But at the t- same time, he said to pray always. Pray always. Pray always. Pray always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to the end, and with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. He admonishes us. He said, do it. This is the Apostle Paul. He's in jail. This is the Apostle Paul who stuck his hand in, in, in what, what did he get on him? A, a snake, a poisonous snake. What did he do? Oh. Shook it off. Why? Because he knew who and whose He was in Christ Jesus. It is the fact that sometimes, well, Pastor, I know that. I know that. I know who I am. I know I am. Well, Pastor, I was trained in Word of Faith. I know about that. But the problem is, we still approach it. I was raised up, I was raised up nothing until I got saved. Yeah, that, I'm not going to tell you that church name. I didn't know nothing. It's just something you did and you went home. You did and went home. You played spin the bottle on Youth night at Wednesday night, you know, that's what you did. And it was horrible. It was horrible. Nobody told me you had to be born again. Nobody. And I was 18 years old before I heard the gospel. And I said, what? I've been playing organ in this place for years since I was 10 years old. What? What? There's good news. What? I got a savior. 
What? Somebody died for me? What? I can have eternal life? What? There's a power that I've never known? And man, that began the journey. And then God put us in a spirit-filled church. What? What? That's crazy. What's that guy doing? I've been every freaky church that you can ever imagine. Some of them we meant to minister in. Some of them, you know, we're trying to chase the Spirit of God. Anybody try to, oh, let's go here because God's there. Let's go there. Let's go over here. God's over here now. He moved. Sorry, you guys are done. He's over here now. We got to come over. Oh, we got to go to this thing. We got to go to that thing. We got to find him. He told me he would never leave me or forsake me. He's here. He's in us. Look at your new say, man, he's in you even. Everybody look at Bill and tell him, say, Bill, he's even in you. Wave your hand, Bill, so they know. Director of the Alpha House, everybody say, Bill, he's in you. Say, Bill, you're full of it. Good, good. He's been told that more than once. He's full of it. What's he full of? Life, peace, joy, the anointing, God's power, his anointing, his wisdom. He's full of it. Look at somebody else. Say, man, you're full of it too. Kyle, go ahead and tell Lexi. Tell Lexi, just tell her. Say, babe, you're full of it. Pastor said I could tell you. <laughs> she is. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Yeah. Stand up here. Yeah. There's a new season coming for you. The revelation that you're receiving. Don't think it's crazy. Okay? You're seasoned for something that you haven't seen, you just hope for. And God said it's a short amount of time. He said you get an agreement with her. And you guys get an agreement and call that thing in and watch what explodes. You will astound your dad. Okay? <laughs> Holy Ghost is good, ain't he? I see where we at. Oh, he said, "Be watchful." Until when? It's not the war. The war's already been won. But he said, "Be watchful until that battle, that particular battle that you're in, is over." Okay. How many of you know the devil comes to what? Steal, kill, and destroy. Okay. Stand on your feet. Jesus said, "I have come that you might have what." Life and what? More abundant. More abundant life. Hallelujah. He said to put on the armor. All right. Is everybody in here born again? Yes. All right. If you're not, say, everybody close, bow your head, close your eyes for a second. If you're not born again, just kind of raise your hand for a little bit and say, that'd be me. Okay, so we're all saints. Man, praise God. That's awesome. Man. So, now that you all are full of it, you have nothing, you don't have any needs. Anybody got a headache? Anybody got a pain in there or whatever? You? Right here. Gracie? Riley? Right here. Pray for her. Anybody else got a pain? You got a pain? <laughs> yeah. Rika, she's not talking about you, honey. Come on. That's, that's one of our elders. Come up here. Come up here. Bill, Daryl, get on clay, please. Bill Daryl right here. Right there, get him. What you need, girls? My mom's sick. She's sick? Do we want your mom sick? No, we don't. No, we don't. You know. And you, both of y'all. Right there, nine. Come on. Come on, Danae. Come on up here. We don't want your mom sick. God don't want your mom sick, does he? You know that, don't you? Because why? Jesus loves her. This we know. Get an agreement right there. Anybody else got a pain? You got a pain? Right there in your throat? Oh, oh. A Sandy and ma'am right behind her. You come around here and pray for her. Will you? Put your hand on her neck. Right there. That's it. And you guys speak to that. Okay? Anybody else got a pain? I got a pain. Where? Here. Fred, you got a pain? Fred, you got a pain? You got a pain? 
Oh, that's what I thought he was. The other side, where? You got a pain? Betty? Get her? Sabra? 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 That's it. Tell that pain to go. You tell it. Yes, ma'am. That's, thanks. That's all you needed. Thanks for being obedient. Who else has got a pain? You got a pain? Where's it at? Get it. Carter, get down there. It's your buddy. Have a little compassion on him. Tell that pain. That's cute. Misty said she's holding hers. <laughs> Chad, how we doing? Right here. <clears throat> Ken and the young man right in front of him. You guys come up here. I want you to pray for my brother. Okay? That's, you grab him. Yeah. Introduce yourself. Say, hey, my name's Ken. My name's because I forgot already. <laughs> they're, they're new. They're former pastors. Okay? Pray for him. Okay? You just pray in the Holy Ghost. I already know what's going on. Okay? He needs strength and he needs support. Anybody else got a pain? Stephanie, come here. You're going through some change. Stephanie's going through some change. Sherry, grab Carol with you. Hey, beautiful. Doing good. She's going through some change. She's got a new job getting ready to open up. That means a move. Correct? So pray for that, all right? Okay, anybody else? Josh, do we need to pray for Sasha? Is she okay? <laughs> Look at her. I'm fine. God, that's that person to my left. <laughs> Josh, you want to come here, please? Hallelujah. How you feeling? Is it better? A little bit? You want us to hit it again? Are you just going to receive it by faith and walk it out? Okay, so when you come out of here, you're already the healed. So what you do is every time that pain goes up, you say, shut up, I already dealt with you. I say, shut up, I dealt with you. Shut up, I dealt with you. Are you married? I just want to make sure you didn't tell your wife that. So. <laughs> So I know that's not the way you talk, right? That's right. All right. Okay, we'll close this place out. Remember, you don't like to use a microphone, so you have to pay attention. Huh? No, they're good. They're good. Uh, Father God, we just thank you for the word we got this morning. Yes. We thank you, Father God, for this pastor that you put in our lives. Yes, I love him. Hallelujah. Bless him and his wife. Abundantly. Abundantly and Come exceedingly. On. Exceedingly Father, abundantly. We, we That's speak good. health and wholeness on everybody mm -hmm. here and all of our other family members elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And we ask that you grant us, which you already did, a great day. Yeah. And that we all walk in love and no beep in the horns that people cutting us off. That's real, <laughs> real cute. Real cute. All right. Go be blessed. Have an awesome week. See you next week. How you feeling?